The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. Those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, irrespective of their religious attitude. Our Lord says in Ezekiel chapter 18, that all souls belong to me. And in John 3.16, our Lord says that he has loved the world so much. It includes every member of the human race, right from the creation of Adam till to the last person of the rapture of the church and even in the tribulation then follows the millennium. Every soul who has been coming to be a witnesses in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict of this particular dispensation of the church age has a lot more to learn that it has been counted as doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. The experiential righteousness which has been given for us. But in particular for each and every church age, believers' responsibility laid down upon him to be a true witnesses of ambassadorship. In order to evangelize, who have to evangelize the world, by his holy manner walk of life on this earth, by not following the 18 odd steps of Jeremiah, of Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4 through 7 being mentioned for us. The legalism, the morality, the emphasis where today the so-called kleptes, lestes, misthotes, the two post-minded pastors are telling about the standards of morality and not engaging the church age believers to be thoroughly occupied in their true calling in Christ. The well-seeming delight to the praise of the glory of God in His grace which He graciously graces us out through His Son and making us to be in accord to his will, Thelema, through the death of our Lord. And you should know the two deaths of our Lord only mentioned in Isaiah chapter 53, the Necros and the Thanatos, substitutory spiritual death, and then yielding out his spirit, the physical death. The substitutory spiritual death causes us to have the first righteousness enjoyed at the moment of salvation for every member of the human race, particularly in this unique dispensation of the church age, the imputation of great righteousness of God, the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit upon us. That is the phase one, that is the experience of salvation, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, says Romans chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. And the world thinks to work upon their own legalistical standards by following the methods which have been mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 18. The methods where our Lord has given for the Old Testament saints to tell how pure they have to be in their dealings with their neighbors, with their fellow men. How pure they have to judge the cause of a needy. How pure they have to keep the ways of the Lord and which are always right and just. And above all he tells even not only defiling your neighbor's wife, even not coming to your own wife when she is in ministerial spirit. 
and I do not know how many religions are teaching these things or how many secretly they are practicing these things. Even the moral standards which our Lord has mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 18, many of the people might not have not really understood in their religion minds to be thoroughly available for those standards, far less they think today in the church. They need to train you up in such kind of a Christian moral degeneracy and Christian immoral degeneracy. Therefore, adding with Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3, Beware of dogs. This kleptes, lestes, misthotes, and tupas crowded men are dogs. Our Lord also used the same term in Matthew chapter 15, verses 26. But today we are able to find such kind of a morons who are entering into the pulpits not emphasizing the first righteousness given for us at the moment of salvation and neither emphasizing for them a constant diligent study to be constantly absorbing with a view to avoid constantly be looking at in the sense of bewaring how this legalism is entering into the pulpit and how do they think that they are able to follow the same legalistical standards in other religion minds and they come up to the conclusion that all gods are one. But dear brethren, the church age pastor who has been given this great responsibility laid down upon his shoulders with the true bona fide gift who is a male believer. And many people don't understand the word which has been used as dogs and Homer who uses it in his poems. Referring to man as well as woman, he tells the recklessness of man and the shamelessness of a woman. The recklessness of a man who has been given this bona fide gift, not getting oriented to this dispensation, not getting oriented to the isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word, neither getting oriented to know the protocol plan of God about this great mystery doctrine in Christ neither able to look in love having predestinated us getting many sons into glory the plan of God to the praise of his glory in his grace which has been graciously graced out through Christ our Lord our Savior not able to teach that you have been given this great mystery doctrine so that before the foundation of the world which glory was given to the Lord should be bought by this great Alekene Ketesus period church age and not able to understand these things they are replacing it with the things pertaining to their own ordinances. That is the recklessness of the bona fide gifted pastor teachers. And do you know what is the shamelessness of a woman? Though the Bible constantly affirms and constantly in the imperative mood of a great command tells to us. A woman is never been as a pastor teacher to have authority over the men in the congregation. Today, in evil's Christendom, we are able to find at the present era of the 21st century, a woman taking the place. And our Lord calls, be aware of such kind of a dogs who have really disobeyed the word of the Lord and teach you good things as mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4 through 8. But they may not teach you the last verse of verse 9 because verses 4 through 8 is a combination of even for unbelievers, religion-minded men, that they be right with the fellow men, that they be right with their neighbors, that they be honest with the poor ones, that they judge the cases with honesty and with integrity. All these things they do and they tell, we are also doing Lord's work. Our religion is great. And Bible is the only key for even those religion-minded men to understand the establishment of freedom code, the establishment of the things pertaining in the Ten Commandments being explained again in Ezekiel chapter 18 in order to know, verses 4, what they have to be in the Old Testament, but they still prolong in the New Testament the same teachings. And they are practicing today morality, holier-than-thou attitude. 
but they are not growing up in the experiential righteousness which has been imputed. The great imputed righteousness for us at the moment of salvation demands that we grow up in the great experiential righteousness in phase two. In phase three, we will be absolute righteousness. But in this phase two, which is of a great value, which is of a great significance, which is of a great truth, many men have really forgot to know the great importance of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah chapter 32, verses 14 till to the point of 16, or 13 to 16 verses, those three verses emphasize for us the resulting work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when it could be emptied in us, poured out, is the translation of KJV, but the original Hebrew calls, when Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is completely poured down, emptied, and for this great and unique dispensation, church age believers, dear brethren, you believe it or not, every believer's body is greater than the shakhan blessing of true prosperity, which he can do it, because of that great Shekinah glory indwelling in him, because the believer is now the temple of God. Because of this temple of God, it is the well-seeming desire of Lord God the Father to get many sons into glory. Those many sons who will also work by making their meat to do the will of God, because life is more than the meat you eat. They will execute in true judgment, because life is more than the cloth or the raiment they wear. And what do they execute? They execute by the things pertaining to the experiential righteousness in the phase two of this earth. And for them, when our Lord desired according to his well-seeming delight, do you know what does it demand when it is a well-seeming delight? Again, we need to get back in Romans chapter 8 verse 10. The word of differentiation between the Thanatos and the Necros deaths which have been given in the word of the Lord in order to understand. Thanatos referring to the physical death. But here in the Necros which has been used in Romans chapter 8 verse 10 meant to say for us your old sin nature has to be put to death and it has been death in Christ. And what do you rise? You rise according to the newness of the spirit. And here in Isaiah chapter 32, we are being given the seven ministerial work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when it has been poured down upon them, completely emptied upon them. But now we should be much more happy to be blessed as a great Macarian believers than those happy will be those men our Lord said pertaining to the information in tribulation as well as in the things pertaining to that AD 70, the dual fulfillment of the prophetic word which our Lord used. In AD 70, they certainly lamented. In AD 70, they went through the process when our Lord said, weep for you and for your children. The dual fulfillment prophecy of Lord God the Father in heaven through his Son, even which will be fulfilled in the tribulation as well. He said for them, be aware, it will be better for you to be barren. It will be better for you because the times are going to come which will be of a tough realm. And he said, and that fulfilled in AD 70. But today when it comes to this great and unique dispensation of the church age, our Lord has given the prophetic ministry now through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the true bona fide gift of the head of the department of the church, which has to be given for only a male believer. And Lord knows who are they in his grace. And what do they do? They lay down their life. For what? Mentoring, feeding the flock. Jeremiah chapter 23. Ezekiel chapter 34, the great subjects which every believer ought to learn. 
the great teachings which has to be in the mind of every bona fide gifted pastor teachers. However, Lord is against them who do not do their work faithfully. The mentoring ministry of Isaiah chapter 32 being mentioned for us. It is not only just poured down or emptied upon them. It will be a result of great righteousness and justice. The wilderness will become a plant of cropping field. And not only just a cropping field, it will move upon to become a big forest, wild wood. That meant to say prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. Not in the realm of pertaining to the physical or material ones, but to the realm of mentioning spiritual prosperity in this church age. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit would have been emptied upon them, they were being given such kind of a things. And that result of prosperity will give them great confidence in Jehovah great assurance in Jehovah and the peace of the Lord will be certainly given to them because of that great righteousness which is now indwelling in them. But now we the church age believers have been given much more than all of these things. It is not just poured down or it is not been emptied upon us. But do you know what our Lord has done in this church age? He has chosen us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. He has chosen us to be available to become the temple of God. He has chosen us to be readily available to execute Kai Hosietis Thesalithia by putting upon the new man which has been created in true righteousness and holiness of God. then how much more we need to be readily available for His work. How much more we need to be readily mindful the things pertaining to God and His doctrine being communicated for us. Are you aware what are you in Christ today in this unique dispensation of the church age? The bona fide duty of the pastor teacher who is a male believer rather than showing his recklessness and causing you to be occupied with the Christian moral standards like those Judy others which our Apostle Paul wrote for Philippians mentioning them that they have their confidence in the flesh but we do serve that great Lord by the things pertaining to worship him by the Spirit of God and proskune, worship. The equivalence for that worship used in Psalms 2.12 teaches for us Nashak. And that great word Nashak, to humble down, to submit, and serve that great Lord in fear. Rejoice in that great Lord by trembling in Him. Because when we know the true purpose of being elected in Christ, the true purpose of being in the Lord, predestinated according to the well-seeming delight of Lord God the Father in heaven, to the praise of His glory in His grace, with proper wisdom and prudence, with right disposition alone, we could be certainly be available for His work. But the great problem today that is happening around is that the people haven't been taught the first and basic principle of rebound. Without rebound, without 1 John 1 9, without the confession of our sins. And they should say how they have to confess our sins. The priests were the ones who were responsible to go on behalf of you in the Old Testament time to offer a sacrifice for sin or burnt or whichever peace and they were the one who were representing you before the Lord but in this church age which our Lord actually designed for those Israelites that in each and every tribe they have to be the priests 
But because of the incident of the golden calf, our Lord erased the eleven tribes and he gave only to the Levites. But in this church age, he has given for every knuckle-headed, the one who is having six fingers, the one who is having a hunchback, the one who is having a leprosy, the one who is having a broken testicles, the one who is even to the realm of bastardship. Or the one who is of so much religious following some taboos. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the only Savior, he has to be enlightened to know, to look and to understand that now he is a believing priest in the Lord. And that great royal priesthood followed by royal kingship and our Apostle Paul mentions for us in Philippians 3.1 It is not irksome or it is not a grievous, slothful one for me to write to you again and again. But I am writing this for you, for your maturity, for your safe. Why we are telling to use the privacy of your kingship? For your safety, for your maturity, what exactly is the word of the Lord? And how about are your lives in alienation to the plan of God? How about you are replacing the great work of Lord God Almighty with the things pertaining to your roles in nature and compromising with the equivalence of Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4 through 9? and thinking that this pious-minded nature of life is enough to be happy with God, and thinking that pay him some bribe through tithes, just follow every day, every week to the Sunday, and you think that is enough that could impress my Lord, and if at all anything goes wrong, you go for your asceticism. Thinking upon your fasting, your weeping, your wailing, your breast beating could suffice the matter and it could be sufficient. And this is how the Christian life should be. Dear brethren, why we are telling to you all to write in the privacy of your kingship? The only simple reason is for your maturity. In Deuteronomy 17, 18, we do find if anyone who has to be a king, he has to write at least once the Torah taken from the hands of the Levites. But now our Lord communicated through his apostles and through the prophets of the Old Testament time. The law was being written by the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. Moses, taking this both into one consideration, Peter writes in his dying declaration of 2 Peter 3, 2, be mindful of the words, get into your remembrance, Mamnisco, all the time be mindful about them because constantly observing with the will to avoid that which has been absolutely dog manner in the pulpit, recklessness of the false pastor teachers, the four categories, kleptes, lestes, misthotes, and tupas. Recklessness of such kind of a pastor teachers and the shamelessness of the women pastor teachers. Be aware of such kind of a dogs. Be aware of such kind of an evil workers. Be aware of such kind of a men who mutilate who change, who downcut. The one who are consciousness, that which is due to you, they take it and they cut it off. That which is in the sight of God designed for you to be the true believers of maximum glorification in Christ by executing this true and unique protocol plan of God. They just cut it off. They just cut it short. Because it takes daily preparation. And the only work for the pastor teacher is to study, to study, to study. His life is not of his own. He is dealing with the flock of Lord God Almighty. 
and not to just entangle them in the Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4 through 9 but rather make them to understand worshipping that great Lord by the Spirit of God by executing the true process mentioned for us in Isaiah chapter 32 verses 13 through 16 the seven ministry of the Spirit what it exactly happens in this sort of a wilderness of your life after believing in the Lord it is not just that you have been absolutely available for Lord's work you are being now separated for Lord's work and in order to be fit for Lord's work do you know what in your experiential righteousness of your day-by-day -day process a lifetime of study has been required a day-by-day -day learning has been required a day-by-day -day growth has been required so that the rate of learning should always exceed the rate of forgetting in Christ every day is a spiritual manna for us the only reason in the YouTube the people are not able to look and understand these messages and they just pass by I am not able to pray the introduction prayers at least they could know the seriousness of those things but it is a must an introduction prayer of rebound and I am assuming whenever I start my message is the one who have been followers the one who have been listeners that they have been done with the rebound prayer and there have been the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because we should be the true worshippers of the Lord whom our Lord God the Father is seeking according to his well seeming delight having predestinated us in love before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless doing and willing the executing power of Lord God the Father in us through his spirit and yielding that fruit to the praise of his glory in his grace that we worship that great Lord in spirit and in truth assuming that you have used your rebound in the privacy of your priesthood that was the real work of the priesthood which we have been mentioning for you and after having your prayer being controlled of Lord God the Holy Spirit then you can listen to the word then you can try to discern what is the spiritual enlightenment and then your journey begins the cleansing of the garbage in your soul in order to know the neck cross death of your all sin nature being buried in Christ and you have been raised with Christ by the spirit of life that we are going to live for true righteousness and peace in the Lord because enmity, of, enmity with God is our flesh and then what you do first you cleanse out the garbage of your soul and then later on like a newborn baby second Peter first Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 with the sincere word of the Lord throwing away all hypocritical standards malice whichever it is in the old sin nature you take the sincere milk we don't give solid food to the newborn baby why are these things time is short you cannot waste your much of your time in drinking milk or next the second growth will be to eat some bread Matthew 4 4 or Deuteronomy 8 3 and from there on you go for what Hebrews 5 14 the greatest one strong meat by the practice of your senses you are able to understand and listen what is right and what is wrong and Apostle Paul reached that status quo in three and a half years he did not confirm with the flesh and blood to go whether he had been called as an apostle what did he do he went for preparation and in Galatians he mentions after being prepared he came back to teach us this gracious way of grace after grace and in his epistles of Apostle Peter writes pertaining to Apostle Paul and tells his letters are hard those who are unlearned those who are unstable and unlearned in the sense who are not able to learn and grow up daily 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 the business with the Lord in the true bona fide spiritual gift of the pastor teacher is daily 
It is not weekly ones, monthly ones. It is daily. He recognizes that which is of daily teaching. The rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting. It is daily. You may think who is having time. You have enough time in the eternity to be as a loser rather than a winner believer in the Lord. Then to have short time over here on this earth and turn the greatest opportunity by creating a chance for you to occupy yourself with the word of the Lord and to desire to have a true volition to learn and to seek the truth rather than desiring to be involved in the legalism of this world through the various facets of religions being mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 18. Though they have been mentioned by Lord God, the father of Yahweh, now those things are being taught in the church. But the church plan is different. The church plan calls you to be adult sons. And in Galatians 3, Apostle Paul writes, the law is weak and beggarly elements. Those are still the beggarly elements for you. And by that I mean to say morality is not virtue of Christian which has been given for us through the knowledge of the mind of Christ, the word of Lord, the voice of the Spirit. That virtue has to be developed by you and that could come only by the daily teaching and daily mentoring under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to the congregation. Daily mentoring, daily study and daily teaching. If you go through the original exegesis, you will not enough have, you will not find enough time even to talk useless and worthless things with your friends, useless and worthless things while you're communicating the word. You will not even have time even to the one who has been on the way as an obstacle for you. You just make a sign and say, get out. Nothing could be more pure for you rather than the people they think having an Android handset in their hands and having to keep one Bible beside them. And they have much of the time to give in a day 90% to the Android mobiles and not even 10% to the preparation sincerely in the word of Lord. I use this word sincerely and honest in order to represent your divine attitude towards the word of God and towards his fear. Because we do find men who are not sincere in preparation. Why they are entering into the ministry, they are not aware. They just come to the standards of ministry to become their source for food. That's it. They come here to fulfill their lustful patterns of the walls in nature. But in the divine plan of God, it is a daily business. It is a day by day. Apostle Paul mentions for us, outward man perishes, though inward man has to be renewed day by day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, Apostle Paul tells daily what they are teaching in the pulpits. I am worried about it. Luke chapter 19, verses 46 through 47, our Lord says, Daily I was teaching to you in the temple to make it once again the house of prayer rather than the house of den of thieves. And in fact, even if you can find in Jeremiah chapter 16, his word was burning in me. Jeremiah chapter 20, it is not 16. And that was daily. How much time you have to enjoy here on this earth to grow up the standards of maturity after salvation? If you can ask me, it will be for the parents who have to train their children rather than naming to be Christian names in their life. Just naming them to be a Christian life is not the issue, not the criteria. The parents have to be first grown up. The second divine institution, marriage. So that in the first divine institution, the individual believer, he or she, getting out from the recklessness and shamelessness, to be appearing before the Lord in grace, but not able to meet those great standards of Lord God Almighty, but rather involving themselves in the legalistical standards of morality, because an unbeliever is far more superior morally than you as a believer in the Lord. And you think you could be 
qualified by your morality. You are doing a good life. You are doing a pious life. And Lord is blessing you with children. Lord is blessing you with prosperity. Dear brethren, because of that great imputed righteousness given for you in his grace pipeline, he blesses you, not for your works. The true prosperity depends always in the knowledge of doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. If you are not growing up in the word of the Lord day by day, then there is no true prosperity for you as mentioned in Zechariah chapter 8 as well as in 2 John 3. First your soul should prosper in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Then everything will follow, then every blessings will follow. Don't ever think because of your legalism. Don't ever think because of your asceticism. Don't ever think because of your mystical standards. By not getting aware of about the dogs, not getting aware about that evil workers, not getting aware about that conscient, mutilated men who mutilate the things pertaining to God into their own standards and cutting down, which is not according to the mind of Christ. Don't think by just following them you will be certainly being blessed. If an unbeliever is far more superiorly blessed than you, if he goes to the temple in India, we do have. If he goes towards his God in the realm of their own religion standards, whatever, whichever they practice. Do you think our Lord is a cheaper one and compared to them? Our Lord has placed a condition for you to be certainly being blessed. And that condition is that you have to reach maturity in the word of Lord and in order to know your life in order to know the true maturity in Christ it is safe for you that you write at least once for the true royal kingship chosen for us in eternity past at least once you have to write the Bible given for us by the prophets, given for us by the apostles and greatly given for us by the great reformation movement in 1513 cutting down the Holy Roman Empire and given for us in our own hands the Bible of 1611 of KJV and from there on what do we have? we have a sure foundation about the 66 books those 66 books you write Get yourself matured, get yourself safe, being aware about these dogs, about these evil workers, about this one who are mutilating, cut down, cutting upon the true wealth of your spiritual realm, which has been given for every believer in equal privilege and equal opportunity, and which has been given for you in order to know before the foundation of the world in love, having been predestinated to the praise of his glory in Christ according to the good will of Lord God the Father, calling many believers into the sons of God. calling many sons into his glory. Teaching all these things, do you know what? I have not gone through the detailed process of Ezekiel chapter 18. One or the other day, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit leads us, we are going to take him. I have not gone for you the detailed process of Isaiah chapter 32, because do you know why? Time is cutting us. But my duty is to teach, whether they hear or forbear. My duty is to be answerable to my Lord, not for you. But I am not able to find such kind of a time in teaching for you all for more than one hour or 60 or 70 minutes, whichever we caught. Then how these people are able to think weekly once for 45 to 50 minutes in their message, in the sermons, in the pulpits. They can certainly edify you for the growth in the Christ. And I'm not able to understand how the pastors are wasting their lives. If they're really true pastors, they will be burdened to be occupied with Lord's business. And we have read what was Lord's business. When our Lord said, Why are you seeking and searching me? No, you're not. I have to be in my Lord's business, in my Father's business. And what is the true business for the bona fide gifted pastor teachers? To thoroughly train you up through proper reputation, through proper teaching, 
through proper learning and making you all to get oriented for number one priority, doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. There is nothing that can impress my Lord apart from his doctrine because you have to think in his terms and conditions, in his mind, in his voice, in his word. You have to think according to him. You have to get oriented or tune your mind according to the thinking of Christ and that thinking of Christ in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to worship that great Lord by that great Spirit of God given for us who permanently indwells in us. But the feeling is temporary. Whenever you grieve, squelch or lie, you are going to lose the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And how are you going to get it back? By rebound the privacy of your kingship, in the privacy of your priesthood. So that after using the privacy of your priesthood, though the Israelites failed, now in this church age, every believer has been given this great privacy of the priesthood, not that you come weekly once to the confession room, the way how the popery has done, but wherever you are, wherever you are, you can just take it out with a fraction of a millionth of a second and say, Father, I have sinned against thee. You say privately to Lord God the Father. It is not that you are going to walk an aisle, raise your hand and say among so many people before I have to confess my sins. No. The church age doctrine says you don't have time. The church age doctrine says keep clear account. Not like the Old Testament doctrine. That you travel a long journey with your sheep or ram or goat and go to the priest and say, this time I have done such and such sin. I'm going to offer the sacrifice in place of me. The sin which have to be available for you first in your mind to think is that the sin unto death, the third and ultima, first gives our Lord warning discipline Second, our Lord takes to the intensified stage of discipline. The third thing our Lord does is sin unto death. Do you know why? In the first two standards of disciplines, you have not changed. You have not repented. You have not really feared the Lord. And then finally, sin unto death. And those men were to come traveling a long journey by replacing in order to have Lord's mercy upon them, not to die sin unto death. The sign of confession which they used to travel, it was a mark to say they are really coming again to obey, coming again to live according to the rightful attitude of the Lord, executing in His law, walking in His judgments. And looking upon the statutes of the Lord and seeking to obey them as King Joash did. King Joash sought further to know what was this doctrine, what did he do? He humbled himself. That is the right and true privilege of every believer in Christ to humble and to seek further according to the mind of Christ what it is. But today, the believer in the church age, in this great and unique dispensation, has been given to confess right then and there. Need not worry to travel to the temple of God, because you are the temple of God. But in the privacy of your priesthood, make sure you are getting out of your sins by the confession before the Lord. And you are readily available to that great Lord's work because time is short. And this privacy of the priesthood has been given for this church age believer alone. After the rapture of the church, no tribulation again, they have to follow the 70th week of Daniel to be fulfilled. The millennium again, the millennium temple. Again, the Levites from the line of Zadokites will come. And once again, they are going to have their things pertaining to God in the presence of the Lord, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And do the things which are according to His will. Whichever doctrine has written for us from Ezekiel chapter 40 till to the verse chapter number 48. 
And even in the millennium, they teach pertaining to the things of Christ, says Ezekiel chapter 44. But now we, the church age believers, are much more graced out. In the privacy of our priesthood, irrespective of your things pertaining to the Lord. And it has been told for us. Earlier you were such and such, but now in Christ you are being sanctified. You are being justified. You are being made holy and kept apart for Lord's work. And you are being bought with a very great price. Do not serve men any longer in the sense, do not serve your old sin nature. You put it to neck cross, but rather mortify the deeds of your flesh. And the great ritual, only unique ritual given for us in this church age. Partake in the flesh and blood of the Lord. Day by day. Be readily available for that doctrine. This flesh and blood of an earthly one will certainly has the old sin nature to pop up. And you have the solution rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. And you may say, Lord cannot forgive me, I have such kind of a great sin. For your greatest sin which your mind can, Im can imagine or cannot even imagine. Even the world sins put together, whether they can imagine they have done such kind of a worst sin. Or whichever manner the mind can think, dear brother and Lord has paid more above than that. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even imagine or think. The works of darkness which you may think and Apostle Paul mentions not to speak. Going through necromancy at one hand, human sacrifice at the other end, the greatest one through Satan. Or in fact even the believers since when we have been told in AD 70, 0070 the tongues crowd has been stopped but they now come to tell till the tongues crowd has been there. In India it is like Arashi Marbaga and, 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 in, and in other countries it is like Hikto Tikto or whatever manner they speak gibberishly in tongues. Even when they are blaspheming my Lord because you are a believer in the Lord. Because of your ignorance or arrogance. Even for that our Lord has paid. Do you know why? When once you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The very next thing is to be controlled by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And since Revelation 2 and 3 teaches for us. Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne, Satan's copulation point. Many false teachers being raised. Satan knew very well it cannot touch a believer. Satan knew very well it cannot even have to be really available to dwell in them because it cannot cross the fortification which has been given in this great and unique dispensation church age believers. Satan knows very well it cannot cross. But it can new, it can influence your thinking. And that thinking, with the false teachings, the doctrine of demands, with the false teachings getting oriented for you, so that you should not get oriented to the true plan of God. With these false teachings, like the way how we could find the Zudayadas mentioned in Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. And Apostle Paul mentions for them, be aware about these dogs. At that time it was Judeaders, but today we do find the Kleptes, Lestes, Mistotes, and Thupas as the dogs. Who are reckless for preparation in the study of the work of Lord God Almighty given for us to make every believer perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge and wisdom for their proper disposition of prudence. 
the one seeming delight of Lord God the Father to see in each and every believer his beloved Son, who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is representing us. And when Lord God the Father sees in him, he, see, he sees us because he has purchased. But when Lord God the Father wants to look down upon this earth, in the believers one who have been kept as the realm of pilgrimage trip on this earth, he has to see Christ in you. And that is the whole purpose of Apostle Paul teaching for us. Laboring much, much more than a woman who travels in her pains for birth pangs. I am laboring much so that Christ should be formed in you. And today, we don't find such pastor teachers. His labor was day and night to be pure from the counsel of God, to be pure from the blood of those men which will be laid down upon his shoulders, upon his head. He said, let that blood be upon your own head because I have been taught to you the every counsel of God and nothing I hid. I taught everything, everything, everything. But today in certain churches, pastor teachers are appointed for a lifetime. But Apostle Paul's work was not like that. He knew it was a traveling seminary. Once at Ephesus, once at Troas, once at each and every place, he went there for two years, one year, one and a half year, three years, three and a half years. Moving on from place to place to train them up, to stand, make them, to be perfect and complete. And then ultimately he says, I command you to grace and to the word of God, word of God, word of God. That's what I'm telling for you all. In the privacy of your kingship, we are commanding you for you to write the word of the Lord so that it is for your sake, for your maturity. Because of these dogs, because of these evil workers, because of these people who have been entertaining to you through this charismatic gospel and prosperity gospel have suddenly taken out that which is of your great spiritual wealth in Christ. But at least you should be aware of that. You should be aware of these people. And if you ask in the word, it is constantly absorbing with the view to avoid that which is taking out your true wealth in Christ. We do know narrow is the gate. Only few people can make it not pertaining to the salvation but pertaining to their spiritual wealth in Christ only few people can make it the principal primary reason only why few people can make it is that not many people really love doctrine they want to impress that great Lord with XYZ reasons XYZ methods XYZ steps but that great Lord is not impressed by those legalistical standards of their maturity thinking. That great Lord will be impressed only by his word, doctrine, residing in your soul. That great Lord is going to prosper you according to the escrow blessings in time. When you move your ranges of your spiritual maturity standards from spiritual self-esteem, then the second stage, spiritual autonomy. Then the third stage, spiritual maturity. In the first stage, it is cognitive self-confidence. In the second stage, it is cognitive independence. In the third stage, it is cognitive invincibility, occupation with Christ. A happy Macarian believer is the one who has been known that he's been occupied with Christ and nothing in his happiness has been found in this world. His happiness is that he has made an abode for the Trinity. And in Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, our Lord asks, Where is the house that you can build for me? Where is the dwelling place that I can reside, that I can rest? We in humbleness in this unique dispensation of the church age should say, Lord, my flesh is the realm for your house, and my soul and spirit is the dwelling place for you to rest. And that resting is nothing but doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. 
and dear brethren you cannot waste your life by learning the equivalency of moral standards which unbelievers speak to you which unbelievers practice in their lives Christianity is not the things pertaining to an unbeliever moral attitude Christianity is far above than morality this church age is far above than you believe it or not dear brethren than the standards that this world can think because of their circumcision because of their cutting of the flesh because of their piercing in the flesh because of their going upon the cross because of their weeping wailing and breast beating is superior all these things are legal standards coming straight from the mind of satan in order to think that you should avoid doctrine with our lord like ragamalik who taught in zechariah chapter 8 i don't want to follow all this stupid activities i want to learn doctrine your weeping your fast are not as per the things pertaining to the word of the lord and he knew that and he went in search for a right prophet today our salvation is by grace by faith alone in christ alone there is nothing you can work your salvation by your works including baptisms which many people think if you are not been baptized you are not been saved that is a lie you at the moment of your physical you, you at your moment of your salvation when you tell to lord god the father that you believe upon his son in the privacy of your soul then and there itself you are been saved and when you are been ready to take baptism it meant to say you are there for lord's fitting work like a martyr to die even until the point of your death that is your good conscious answer towards the lord a thorough dedication towards christ but what are we doing today in the church replacing it for your salvation telling it that you will be not be saved if you are not taken baptism baptism is nothing even unbelievers take the great salvation is by faith alone in christ alone in your consciousness you will certainly count to think that without this great imputed righteousness of a great one of an absolute righteousness for us which man cannot turn cannot dissolve cannot work though the world's entire righteousness put together it still will be minus r in comparison to that great imputed righteousness for you at the moment of salvation the only plus r by faith alone in christ alone you may take 100 times baptisms you may fast till to your death you may weep and wail for your things pertaining to this earth but they will not get that salvation except by faith alone in Christ alone this salvation is of a very true simple process but it demands a true repented heart the true repentance in Christ and what a great privilege it would be in the presence of the lord to have that great and true repentance in Christ that great absolute righteousness for you to be credited in your account after believing in the lord lord god the holy spirit controlling your soul making you not to grieve not to squelch not to lie even in the mind know your thought word or deed which you do so lord god of the father has made a provision in this unique dispensation of the church age the privacy of your priesthood so that you can get back once again into the mentor ministry of lord god the holy spirit because the time is short and you should be edified in the thorough knowledge of god because of his well seeming delight and the pastors don't teach to you and lord knows very well how the church is going to end up in apostasy and he has made for every believer to be a king and in that kingship what they have to do in deuteronomy 17 in long prior to the kingship realm could start in Deuteronomy Moses writes how a king has to be of his own brethren that he has to be to write at least once the law given to the given to the levites and he has to take that and he has to write and now our lord applies the same principle for the church age at least you should write once the bible if you are a believer and if you are a pastor teacher it has to be twice once from the original languages of the scriptures hebrew greek and aramaic 
after being putting your foundation in the mother tongue of your language or whichever language you can easily learn and write because you should be safe you should be mature enough you should be oriented enough to the plan of God and you should be aware of these dogs of these evil workers who are working their evil attitude mannerisms through Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4 through 8 not mentioning the things pertaining to verse 9 because it says you should walk in my status you should walk in my law why I'm telling from verses 4 through 8 because legalism is found there and in that legalism, our Lord mentions not to defile your neighbor's wife, not to even go to the one who is in Manishra's realm. He goes to such kind of an extreme legalism because our Lord says, all souls are mine. That was to the Old Testament saints. But when it comes to the New Testament, our Lord says, the law which is weakened in beggarly elements could not even save one. That meant to say not even one was able to keep those standards except our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in comparison to the other religions, how many of them could stand there? They should know, they should think. Including defiling their neighbor's wife or their own wife during the ministrous periods which he goes through. They should tell honorably before the Lord in their own consciousness. And our Lord says it is an unclean thing for unbelievers. But in the Old Testament time, he includes an unclean thing even for believers. And he tells, be separated, be separated, be separated and be pure. Then I will select you. Then I will be with you. But they never did. But on the contrary, Isaiah chapter 32 teaches for us. A great relationship with the Lord in his spirit. Where with righteousness and peace. In Ephesians 4.24 we have Kai Hosiatis Thessalatia being renewed in the spirit of your mind. And if you have learned Christ, you are going to live according to these things. And from then, the wilderness will become a fruitful land. And will not stop there. That fruitful land will become a big forest. And that meant to say, newly born baby in Christ will become an adult man. And from adult man, he becomes a mature man, fatherly position. And that great much wisdom has been given for us in this great and unique dispensation of the churches alone. And how you have to be available for that great work in Christ? Do you know how? By daily feeding in the word of the Lord. Someone is cheating you by not giving you the spiritual food. You yourself are being cheated because of your deception in hypocritical standards not to be pure and straight, to serve that great Lord in fear, to rejoice in his trembling. You yourself are being deceiving. You yourself are being absolutely not aware that there should be a fear in Jehovah, that there you should grow up, that there you should learn, that there you should come. You think gibberishly jumping along, dancing along in the emotional ecstasy of these periods and you are going to tell for them because I am gibberishly speaking in tongues, I have been controlled of the spirit and I am a pious minded man. With that attitude just throw out. The greater the word you take, the greater humble you become. The greater maturity of your sign is that you perfect them with the bondness of love. I'm not really against those who are being cults in the realm of speaking in tongues or miracles or healings. But rather I'm telling to them, correct, to repent, to change. Because even you are a believer in Christ. You are losing your great rewards in the Lord. You are not able to make up the plan of God which has been designed for you in eternity past. 
You are grieving and squelching and lying to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By not differentiating this word according to the doctrine of dispensations. By not understanding that it is a pre-canon period or a post-canon period. By not understanding the difference between temporal spiritual gifts and permanent spiritual gifts. And in that realm I am telling, be aware of those dogs. Be aware of those evil workers. Be aware of that which has been called for you. And that which the people are cutting down, which is not for you. But you have your evolution. Flesh and blood who are serving for their old sin nature will never teach to you this truth. It has to be revealed by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It has to be given for us when we are readily available to have a right and true fellowship with that great Lord God Almighty. No matter however the chips may fall, our duty is to be readily available for His work. What else you have on this earth as a believer in the Lord? What else you think it could be prayer for you? But not growing up in the knowledge of doctrine in Christ. Many people have many opinions. But the mind of Christ has only one opinion. And that is every man should be saved and come to the exact true knowledge in Christ. And in order to acquire that exact true knowledge, the greatest mandate given for us in 2 Peter 3.18, grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Grow up. How do you grow up? Weekly once? No. Daily, daily, daily. And our Lord figuratively uses that. The plant which has been planted by the rivers of water certainly yields its fruit in every season. Neither of its leaf will vanish off. But everything, whatever he does, will prosper. Because it is Christ in him indwelling. It is God the Father in him indwelling. It is Lord God the Holy Spirit training them up for that process of true shakan, true prosperity through the word of the Lord alone. And narrow is the gate. And in the royalty of your kingship, which our Lord has given for you, you have to write at least once the Bible. If you have enough strength, write it down upon your knees. No humble subjection. In the worldly affairs that we are going through in this pilgrimage trip, among unbelievers, when a woman kneels down before a man of a great one, it certainly changes his heart to give that which is required for that woman. But we kneel down here because we know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself has kneeled. Apostle Paul has knelt. Many great men in the past of prophets have knelt. And I'm not calling it to be legalism, but rather the reverence which we could pay to the Lord in complete humility in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In Jeremiah chapter 2 we have verse 4, worship, to bend down our knees, proskune. And we bend down with the humble subjection to the Lord to teach us His will. And when we have learned that will, to give enough power for us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To teach and to record and keep for those who are readily available for His work with the true, bona fide fellowship of hearing in Christ. So, we are here to tell to you again and again, whether you may kneel it or not, it is your business. 
according to the strength which our Lord gives, so that when we can answer back to the Lord, when we go there, we can tell, Father, your witnesses are there on this earth who knelt for you, who have done writing Bible upon their knees, and there is nothing that they can go against the glory of God to honor his word above his name. And there was nothing hindrance in making the people for your true witnesses through MGG, through maximum glorification of God. Dear brethren, ponder over these things, think about these issues, meditate upon these things, whether you are being still in the bondage of those dogs or evil workers or you are still in those mutilated, conscient, down-cutting members or you want us worship that great Lord by the Spirit of God with rendering service and obedience whose main work is to exalt our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they don't have confidence or trust in the flesh. Ponder over these things as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In our will, in the privacy of their soul, when they tell to Lord God the Father that they believe upon their Son, that is the moment itself they shall have this great peace of God. And for the believers, it is a great mandate to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine so that when they learn to acquire, to perceive the truth, the truth shall set them free, worshipping that great Lord by the Spirit of God itself. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest mandate is to carry Sotan Lagan, herald the word in season, out of season, because of that great diamond through my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in Valentinity, followed by Bible in our hands. Number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But we not worry about the softies, but rather be available for his work on this earth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful for this great privilege that was going to have fellowship with you through thy word. Though, Father, we are not able to make the starting prayer, kindly forgive us pertaining those things, but rather help us to make available to these people who are perishing, good, who are turning out from the word of the Lord and not able to enjoy themselves in the true word of God. Father, we commit everything into your mighty hands. Kindly lead us and enlighten us for thy grateful work on this earth. We are much privileged and we are grateful for this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher given to us to train according to your terms and conditions on this earth. Strengthen us more and more to do thy will rather than seeking the things of this flesh attitudes on this earth, but rather worship you in the spirit of yours of God. In Christ's name we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us. Amen.